everybody, how you doing? Once again, it's a Friday night or a Monday morning, and you are watching Time Out with Kevin Gallagher. I'm, of course, your host. And I'm here tonight not for politics, not for current events. We're here doing some art, some, some music for you. And we love doing these shows for you. I know my cameramen and a lot of my crew love doing the musical shows. And we're going to get right into it. I'm here tonight with a, I guess you'd call yourself a folk rock artist? Yeah, folk yeah. rock, acoustic rock, acoustic some, rock, something like that. It's hard to... Kind of There's describe. so many labels and things and genres and niches and all that. It's hard right. to exactly label it. But yeah, folk rock. Well, you just got to look at them. And I'm here with Dave King, who is a folk rock, whatever you want to call it, niche artist. And we're going to get right into the music. That's why you're watching. And the name of the song is The Fog, The Wind, and The Rain. And that's performed by Dave King, who wrote the tune. So take it away, Dave. I will do that. My boat, she's awaiting in the harbor. She's gonna carry me out to sea. Past the shoreline and the lighthouse, past the clang of the buoys. There's got to be a better place somewhere where a man can more than just survive. Cause here there ain't nothing happening at all. Say goodbye to the harbor light. Good living, but working is a lobster man. We pull up the traps at the end of the day, get paid, and head on into town. But now the fish don't bite, and there's no high tide. Everything's gone down. I lost my girl, and she ran off with a guy from the dark side of town. Nothing to gain, so I'll just be sailing under the fog and the wind and the rain. Miles or so down the coast I'm on my way to the cold dark night Like a wounded empty ghost Yeah There's just no reason to stay here no more Nothing to lose and nothing to gain So I'll just be sailing all through the fog and the wind and music is that they all the songs all seem to tell like a story yeah well yeah a lot of folk music does yeah and where do you get the ideas for the music because this kind of tells a story do you come up with a story idea kind of well or, or do you come from another direction and the story kind of evolves from that yeah it, it, you know each one is different that one i wrote after i um i took a little vacation up the the coast of maine 
and stopped all little uh, seaports and things along the way. And I came back and uh, just thought, you know, like, I, I kind of had like Jimmy Buffett in mind when that I wrote that. That doesn't remind thought, me of Jimmy Buffett, though. I thought I'd kind of like to write a Jimmy Buffett type song, you know. And um, so it, it, it just came from that, you know. Hmm. And the imagery of, you know, the, the fog and the wind and the, the kind of New England buoys and lighthouses. And, yeah. you know, I tried to work all that stuff into it, yeah. So who, who would you say are your musical influences? It's hard to say who, you know, it's hard to say who influences me the most. Um, you know, there's people that just I've listened to for years and years, like, you know, the Beatles and Bob Dylan, Paul Simon, you know, you rattle them off as influences and it's almost like a cliche because right. they influenced like everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the but, Beatles, I think, influenced anybody you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the Beatles stuff, it, it's really amazing. You know, it's timeless. You know, it still sounds good today. And, um, you know, it's like 40 years old now and stuff. Well, that, and there's some other, other musicians that would not be very similar to, to, to the Beatles like Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. Their stuff sounds like they recorded, you know, this morning. It, it's yep. really incredible. Yeah, yep. yeah and, and, you know, like you mentioned Jimi Hendrix and stuff, you know, I do not consider myself any kind of, a, like, guitar virtuoso. You know, I, I don't... Focus in on the Eric Clapton's and the Jimi Hendrix's and, and stuff like that so much. I, uh, the people that are inter interesting to me are, you know, more the singer-songwriters and the people who are putting lyrics Dylan. and music together and, and coming up with that. Yeah, and it's interesting you know. because Dylan was a big influence on Jimi Hendrix. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All on the Watchtower. And yeah. Yep, yep. Speaking of which, we have the sun, the moon, and the stars. Yeah. What's the story behind that tune? Um, that one I wrote, it's like, you know, it's like a lovey-dovey kind of a love song type thing. And again, I, I, I guess, I guess when I go away, that inspires me to write, because this was another trip that I was on, and, um, was away and, um, was missing my, uh, significant other at the time. And, uh, this was one of those ones, I think I, you know, I sat down and wrote this in like 15 minutes or something. It just came yeah, out. You, it just, yeah, you just... Da, 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 and it it's like you looked right at out. it and you said, this is done. Well, it pro you know, it was probably a rough version, but pretty darn close to the finished thing. So and how do you know you when you write a song, refine it a little how bit. do you know when it's done? I guess when you're happy with it, you know? And you're like, I don't need to tweak this anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some songs I have that, you know, have been written over a long period of time, you know? I'll, never really quite be happy with it and hmm. pull it out later and, and work on it a little more and try to get it the way I want it to be. You know, a couple well, how songs. about the sun, the moon, and the stars? Okay, we can, we can do that one for you. You know sun that shines on you You know Where they shine on me too We're really not so far apart You feel me and I feel you No matter where we are what we say and do I know that as I sing I know that as I grow You can't hear me though I'm so far, far away And I'll soon be coming home Soon be coming home You know Moon and stars that glow on you You know Well they glow on me too Nothing could ever tear us apart You love me and I love you No matter where we are what we say and do I know that as I sing And I know that as I roam You can't hear me though I'm so far, far away And I'll soon be coming home Soon be coming home, yeah So sleep sound and me Sweet dreams prepare
remember them Remember the sun and the moon and the stars in the sky They'll keep shining on forevermore You know They'll never die The sun and the moon and the stars in the sky I know as I sing I know that as I roam You can't hear me though I'm so far, far away And I'll soon be coming home Soon be coming home, yeah Soon be coming home Soon be coming home good it's kind of the counterpart to the first one because you know sun the moon and the stars the other one's the fog and the wind the rain right i didn't really plan it out that way you didn't but plan it, it, it that no way? no not at all but it just sort of came out in fact they were written all a long time apart. apart from each other yeah yeah now you have an album that i've been listening to and a lot of uh, and some other things that you gave me you said that this album took you about two years to complete now mm -hmm. was that by design I mean, it's not like the band Boston that takes many years to put out an album. Was it? Was it that? Or what, was it by accident, or was it just? It the just way it took happened? that long. You know. Why? Um, it's it's just a really takes a long process. For one thing, I I performed everything on the album. I, I played all the instruments and sang all the songs, and um, in addition to that, I did all the technical recording work. As well. Well, describe for me the process of laying down the tracks mm -hmm. and, and doing everything by yourself. That, okay. that sounds very interesting. Yep. Well, I have a, a computer based recording setup at home. So I, I'm basically setting up mics like this and, and plugging them in and recording into a computer. And since I do it all myself, it's a matter of layering it, you know? So a song, a finished song, some of the songs on the album had up to like almost 20 different individual tracks that you had to layer in separately right right so how do you keep track so, of that well i'll start out and i'll um you know come up with the f the form of the song and lay down the entire length of the song on piano and that piano may not even wind up being in the final version hmm. but it that's what i use then as my guide okay so i have the entire song down just on piano and then i'll come back and i'll you know play the guitar along with that and you're and listening to it on a headphone right right so you then you lay the guitar down and you've got that for the whole duration of the song and then you come back and you put the drums on it and then and you, you come back the and you put the first. bass on it i would it. think the, you would do the drums first well y then then you get lost because you wouldn't know where you were in the song because all you, all you'd be hearing was was right. this you know you need the the chord progressions and stuff to know you know well here here's the intro and here's the verse and then here's the chorus and here comes the verse again and like that. So when you lay down the piano, it's almost like creating an outline mm -hmm. of the song. You know? So how do you take that that you have, that you're laying down, because ultimately once you've laid all that down and you've gotten what you want in the studio, you ultimately have to go out and play that live. So mm -hmm. how do you capture that live sound in the studio if you're, if you're doing it in a very, for lack of a better word, an artificial way? Mm -hmm. Well, in my case, I don't really try to recreate that sound when I'm out because when I play out it's just me and my guitar and, mm -hmm. I, and I can't possibly be doing yeah. all the other stuff I mean I could put a band together and bring a band out and, and then we could you know get that sound the other option is to you know bring along a computer that has all the backing tracks on it and, and play along with that hmm. but I don't really care for that so much I, I feel like that's I don't know, now you you didn't uh, start out playing guitar right no where did you start out playing? That was playing? my first instrument. Uh, when I was just a, a little guy, I started out on the drums. And I played drums up through high school. I was in, like, you know, garage bands and stuff. And along the way, I learned how to play, uh, you know, piano, keyboard type of things along you know, and in there, too. And then I, the guitar I picked up around high school. You know, around so, high school. So the, the drums began to fade, and I, I started becoming away, more yeah. interested in the guitar, yeah. So what is it about the guitar that really grabbed your imagination? Well, I always really liked the acoustic guitar. In fact, I, I didn't own an electric guitar until 
I recorded the CD because I mm. needed some guitar parts in there that were electric. You didn't stuff. own an electric. No, I was always. An I own two electrics. Do you? Yeah. And you don't even play them, right? No. I can't right now because of a, a mm. messed up wrist. Okay. But I, I've always liked the acoustic guitar, and, and one of the things that's really nice about it is that you can just do it on your own. You know, you don't need a band and all that to, to back you up and stuff. And you can go out and perform with just you and your guitar. Which and, is convenient. And you got it. Yeah, it's nice. You're getting a nice sound out of the instrument, and uh, I don't find too many people who can really get a good tonal quality. You can hear each string, you're, you're playing it well. How long did it take you to get that type of quality? Well, I'm still working on it, actually. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. That's a hard question to answer. I don't know. That's my job, is ask the hard questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I've been playing for a long time. I can, I can say that. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I've lost track. 15, lost 20 track? years, something like that. Yeah, long time. Well, what about a hot <coughs> summer night? Hot summer night, yeah, we can do that one. Give me a little background about the uh, about the song for the uh, viewer, and we'll and this we'll is listen one of those to ones. It. This is one of the ones I wrote like kind of a long time ago, and then I I was doing the CD and wanted to actually wanted you know to make the CD a, a particular length, and I was mm -hmm. trying to think, oh, what other songs can we put on there and stuff. And uh, this one I had written you know four or five years ago, something like that and pulled it back out and it, it, it's, it's a perfect example because I didn't like some of the lyrics in it and, and stuff so I wound up reworking it and um, you know it, it came you know, came to it be from there out. but yeah I, I wrote this uh, what it, it's kind of a Bruce Springsteen Type styled of. kind of a song in fact on the CD I used a glockenspiel which is an instrument he used Springsteen used on Born to Run, okay. his song Born to Run. And um, so I, I'm kind of, you know, I don't want to say copying him, but, you know, paying tribute to like Springsteen playing, with his not song. Not plagiarizing you know. that. Right, yeah. right, right, yeah. So it's kind of a, a rockin' summertime, uh, mm -hmm. go wild kind of, mm -hmm. hot summer night kind of song. There you go. So would you like to hear that one now? Yeah. Okay. Let's good. let's hear it. We'll see how the, how the sound guy does with this uh, harmonica. <laughs> Gonna drive him nuts. Yeah, it could. I have to get it adjusted. So you're gonna be playing two instruments Just at right. once, huh? Otherwise, we run into problems. Yeah. Summer slithered in, the heat caught us by surprise. The days were long and the nights were longer, but the nights were paradise. Feel the heavy moon hanging in the sky again. Intoxicated by the sweet summer scent, floating through the night. Nocturnal symphony sings out to me. Why not take a chance and find some romance and make some mystery? Fire up the engine, turn on the lights, and scream away into the darkness and glory of this hot summer night. Surprise. 
I never knew the power of a woman using only her eyes Moving to the jukebox in a roadside bar She said, have another drink and don't even think it Just forget about who you are It's hot, getting hotter This night is on fire Can't stop pushing onward Gotta feel this desire Feel the silent fury wrestling in the dark. Lovers undone moving is one courting a spark. It's a rare and fateful moment when two spirits ignite. So just grab a stronghold and don't let go this hot summer night. So, how hard is it for you to play two instruments like that at the same time? Did that take a while? It to took a while. Yeah, I, I picked up the harmonica a long time after I started playing guitar. Hmm. And um, yeah, I thought it'd be uh, the the reason I did. It, I just thought it'd be a nice way to fill in mm -hmm. the vocal, uh, you know, something for variety. You yeah. Know? It's just so it's not voice and guitar, voice and guitar. You know, throw right. a little harmonica in there and uh, <coughs> makes it interesting. One thing that I, I I've read about you is that you had an agonizing time trying to figure out the order of the songs to put on your CD. Is that true? Well, I, I don't know if it was agonizing, but it's just something that's... Very difficult? It's well, it's important. I, yeah. I think it can actually... Yeah, the song's got to be good and so on and so forth, but um, it's important that they're in the right order, you know, along the way. And, um, you know, you even get down to the detail as far as like the spacing of time mm -hmm. that's between songs. Each track. Like some songs you want, you know, you want one to end and then the next one I just pound right in immediately mm -hmm. after it. Like uh, you have something about the positive attributes of marriage and then yeah. the song Girl comes right nice in. Nice Girl, yeah. Nice Girl, yep. right? Yeah, Exa uh, exactly. Yep. Right. But then like the other one, um, Sun and the Moon and the Stars or Fog in the Wind and the Rain, yeah, they're kind of slower songs and, and you want them to kind of fade out gradually, Right. you take a breath, and then the next song the starts. Next you don't song. want the next one coming right in on top. Because that's so, uh, something that's like always that. kind of fascinating me. When I listen to an album, I go, well, why did the artist or why did the band want the songs in that order? Mm -hmm. And it always kind of intrigued me. Yeah. Like growing up as a kid, even listening to whatever album I was listening to, it's like, why did they put this number one, this number four, this number eight? Plus, with the advent of, of digital sound and CD, LPs, as you know, would be about 38, 39, 40 minutes long. Now a CD you can put a lot more music on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they can get more music out there. So a lot of albums now would be considered double albums back in the 70s. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. And in addition to you know, the, the sequencing on the CD, some, it, it kind of loosely uh, follows the course of a, of a relationship, too. Mm -hmm. 
the, the city starts out all, all nice and sunny, like, you know, we just met this new person and life is good and all this <laughs> kind of thing. And as the CD progresses, it, it kind of, you, you can hear the <laughs> problems start to emerge and stuff. So and it kind of goes, theme. yeah, yeah. So it, it, if, you, if you really listen to it like straight through, you can kind of chart the course of a relationship that <laughs> started out good and then it kind of petered out at the end. Kind of petered know. out at the yeah, end. Yeah. yeah. And, and that was done intentionally. I, it, you know, it just kind of worked. You know, I wanted to have variety in the tempo of the songs. Like, you don't want to, you know, if you've got five fast songs and five slow songs, you yeah. don't want to put all the slow ones together and then all the fast ones. You want right. to, like, mix it up mix so it up. there's some variety. Now, did you do any work? I know a lot of singers that I talk to, they've done a lot of work with, with their voice. Did you take any lessons or things like that? Because... You know, I've known you for a while. I've never actually heard you sing in person. I've heard you on the album, and it's like, you know, I didn't picture him sounding that good. And you got a great voice. So how did that uh, come about? And I got about a minute left. Yikes. Uh, I've really not had... I, I had just a little bit of voice coaching. I was actually having some voice throat problems like a couple of years ago and went to a voice teacher and... Um, she, you know, told me some things I could do to kind of exercise it yeah. and things. Because the, the, the truth is I do everything wrong. I, I do everything I, I do wrong. all the things you're not supposed to do. Um, but uh, somehow it works, you know. Knock, when you make it work, Knock wood right? so far, so good, yeah. We yeah. are running out of videotape, Dave. So you got a tune called Farewell that we're going to mm -hmm. listen to on the way out over the credits. Uh, just play it. Play okay. it. Yeah, this is like one of the last songs on the CD. Okay. So. Farewell, folks. And with that, I'm, of course, Kevin Gallagher. For Dave King, have a great night. We'll talk to you next week. When I last saw you, you said you loved me, but that seems so long ago I've been seeing you for quite some time exactly how long I don't know I'd return you a couple of tunes to express my affection for you but now as I play them they mean less to me than when I first wrote them for you cause now the same Oh, weary sounds Just leave a bad taste in my mouth I don't understand what they did for me Cause they should don't do very much for me now I guess it's time that I move on Cause like those old songs I love's gone stale So I'm writing you this final one To help me save 